BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Another me. And when you have multiple farmer's policies, you could save up to 45% on your auto insurance with the auto multi-policy discount. What's going on with our voice? I thought I'd add some drama. Well, isn't that something? Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Ninety-nine point nine KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We are teaming up with the folks at Mary's Place again. Why? Because we got to put kicks on them kids. That's right. We want to make sure kids in need get a pair of brand new sneakers to call their own. It really helps with confidence. And every dollar you spend will go to that cause. It's pretty cool because the school year is coming up. They're going to want to have good shoes. And you know how that is. The kids get to pick out their own stuff. Mary's Place will distribute all the, all the shoes where they go. They'll get the shoe, make sure the money goes in the right place. They get their own brand and style. Yeah, I was reading something. They have a couple hundred kids that are part of the Mary's Place program, so it would be great to be able to help out all those kids if we can. So all we need you to do is go to KISW.com, make any donation you can. It can be a dollar. It can be $5. If not, spread on your socials. We want to get these kicks on these kids. It's as simple as that. You've done such a great job in the past, so we know you're going to help out and make a coup. You want more info? You want to donate? Go to KISW.com. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. Be mixed. Don't be a loser. Be mixed. You're a loser. It is time to be mixed. And it's time to pump it up for Monday. What do you say? Pump it up. Pump it. Okay, I'll do it. Pump it up. And I'll be honest, I'm still pretty pumped up from the weekend. It was oh, a really oh. nice weekend. What? Not, but it was like you would have had to go outside and stuff. I went outside because I've got the wonderful backyard. Oh, right. And uh, I was able to take the cats out. Damn it, Carl, get in the house. I uh, actually was able to go outside. And mm-hmm. Frank and Accounting also able to go outside. So they spent a, a, a nice little time out there. Wow, look at them. They didn't run away, huh? Uh, no, I have to keep them on a leash because Carl will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah. The last last time it's I like freedom. Yeah, Damn yeah, it. yeah. We, we got little harnesses and the, the the leashes that have the little extenders, so they just can go as far as they well about fifteen feet. Cats on a leash, and he still tried to climb the uh, neighbor's fence to leave the yard. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. What does that say about him uh, and his yeah, living conditions? Yeah. He loves it. He just oh, likes to explore. Steve, oh, sure. what are you insinuating, right. sir? Nothing, yeah. Nothing at all. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to our yeah. contestant today. We got Steve in Tacoma. It's a good old Steve off. Steve, Steve off. What's up, guys? Yo, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> get out of here, Steve. Hey, get out. Hey, French cats with you. Oh, <laughs> For those playing at home, Stephen Tacoma will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Steve, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do it. The name of what pink bird is also the name of a once famous casino in Vegas? The Flamingo. Yes. What year of the mid-2010s did Matt Hasselbeck retire? Uh, 2012? No. 2013? No. 14? No. Ted Allen is the host of what Food Network show? Pass. 
Disneyland is in which California city? Uh, Anaheim. Yes. What mythical Scottish creature was first spotted in 1933? Uh, the Loch Ness Monster. Yes. What do you call champagne mixed with orange juice? Uh, mimosa. Yes. In what country did the Ming Dynasty take place? China. Yes. The Da Vinci Code opens with a murder in what famous museum? The Louvre. Yes. Which U.S. state has Garden State as its nickname? Garden State. New Jersey? Yes. What is the name of the green frog on the Muppets? Green frog. Kermit. Yes. Ted Allen was the host of what Food Network show? Ted Allen. Uh, is that Chopped? Yes. And Ooh. Steve, you get a 9 out of 10. Oh, Look yeah. That timer's about still it. going, too. Woo! I feel Man. good about it. This Steve is pumped up. Yeah. We're going to have to see if our Steve can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Can Steve rise to the occasion? Let's, Let's see if Steve can rise. Much like the bread everyone's making. He's risen from the dead. Oh. He's a zombie. No. Rest in peace. You the Undertaker? Yeah. All right, then cool. See how he did that? <laughs> Steve, yeah. are you ready? Yeah. Oh. The yes, name of what pink bird is also the name of a once famous casino in Vegas? Oh, Flamingo. Yes. What year the mid-2010s did Matt Hasselbeck retire? He retired 2015. No. 2014? No. 2016? Yes. Yeah. Ted Allen is the host of what Food Network show? Oh, crap. I know it, but I see it when it's there. <laughs> oh, what? Um, <laughs> chopped. Yes. Oh. Disneyland is in which California city? Anaheim. Yes. What mythical Scottish creature was first spotted in 1933? Uh, that would be Roddy Piper. No. No, uh, the Loch Ness Monster. Yes. What do you call champagne mixed with orange juice? Screwdriver. No. Mimosa. Yes. Oh. In what country Sorry. did the Ming Dynasty take place? Country? The Ming Dynasty? China? Yes. The Da Vinci Code opens with a murder in which famous museum? The one with the thing. The Louvre. Yes. Which U.S. state has Garden State as its nickname? New Jersey. Yes. What is the name of the green frog on the Muppets? Patrick Mahomes. No. Um, Kermit D. Frog. Yes. And Steve, you get a perfect 10. And you win. Sorry, other Steve. Wow. Uh, What was the difference? Uh, Matt Hasselbeck. Oh, damn it, Steve. All I do is win. Uh, sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> now this Steve in here is dancing. That's right. I really thought I had this one. I know. I ain't betting on breakfast, and this is the reason why. Thank you, Matt Hasselbeck. There's a lot of other reasons. Because <laughs> I always lose, man. Don't be afraid to lose, man. You can't win if you're afraid to lose. Um... All right. That's, that's a good thing in life, brother. Well, oh, thanks, Michael Jordan. <laughs> no problem, buddy. <laughs> yeah, the other Steve uh, guessed a little bit earlier than uh, the mid-2010s when it came down to the Matt Hasselbeck, so that's what cost him. Yeah. But congratulations, Steve. You got that perfect 10. Thank you. I felt good. Yeah. It's a way to start the week. It surely is. I, was, I, I thought for sure you were the underdog on this one, and you came back. Got a survey here, and they said, all right, so uh, what businesses – give you the biggest challenge in finding the one. In other words, this is what you do for a living, and because of what you do for a living, it's hard for you to find the one. You can't find Neo, and therefore you can't save the Matrix. But uh, So I guess it's the hardest for romance, this, the, your occupation? Is that, what, is that what I'm getting out of this? I'm, no, I think this is what's the hardest place to find that you're like um, become loyal to. Like, Oh, to I just find. assumed the one was romance. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Oh, I just totally read that. Like, uh, you know, sometimes you're just reading them. You don't know. I guess. Well, <laughs> yeah. But well, it, when you see them, they have it in quotes like the one. Yeah, because like you know, like a hairdresser, you'd be like, oh, that's my hairdresser. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to quote unquote cheat on my hairdresser. Wow, isn't that funny? Or a tattoo. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like that one's like I, you know, really. There's only been a couple oh. tattooers where I'm like, yeah, I would always go to that person. Like Tony Mitchell, obviously, is a big one for me. But yeah, and there's, you know, other that's guys number as five well. on the list, by the way. I believe that. Yeah, number five for us. So, so this is yeah. So the one where you are super loyal to. Yes. You see, I see the. You know what? All the romance movies got me. I see the yeah, one, man. and I'm just assuming it's like, oh, your soulmate. You're just, you got rom com on the mind. All it's the all time. about the rom com, baby. It's a walking Hallmark movie. All right, so Vicky, what would you say for you is the business where you go was the toughest for me to find the one that's perfect for me? It definitely has to be hairstylist because number I've one let friends do my hair, and just try to help them out. It's like one was in school and he ruined my hair, and I just. Had to get really picky after that. 
Yeah, I have to say, I've had the same stylist for 20 years. You probably don't know why I would need one at all. But every, every, when I moved here, one of the first people I came in contact with was the dude that does my hair. And that was uh, 20 years ago. And it's still the same dude doing my hair. Well, it's even like that with, I mean, obviously, I don't cut my hair. So I, mean, I, I cut my own hair. So I, I'm only loyal to myself and the, the clippers that You're I have. You're doing a great yeah. job, by the yeah. way. But we have, uh, you know, we're very loyal to the dog, dog rumor that we have. Like once we found somebody, it's not even just because they do a good job cutting the hair. It's just how they are around Lulu. Like they're just so loving towards her. Yeah, and it's like that even with like my tattoo artist. Like you know, I mean, I, I love how, what Tony does, but it's more of just how loving he is to me and yes. how he caresses <laughs> me. And, yeah, the caressing is yeah. important with your tattoo artist. The warm embrace that we have right before. Yeah. I, well, that makes sense. It, it, it makes the tattoo better. Yeah, BJ. It really, it really. I mean, that's the only reason you get tattoos. It's not even to say anything. You go put yeah. anything on me. I just want you to hug me. Sadly, that has been Aww. how one of our tattoos has gone. <laughs> oh, nice. Danny, you loyal to any business? Dentist, 100%. Number three Ooh. on the list. Plus dental hygienist. Like a lot of times, because you, like, you can go to the same dentist, but I love going to the same dental hygienist. Can you request them time. like that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, there are times where I, when I we never make, even knew that. When I make an appointment for our dentist, like, hey, just to let you know your usual hygienist is, is busy. Is it okay if we give you the other person? But then there comes a point where you're like, maybe I like the other person better. But then, like, how do you get out of that situation? Wow. Where I, luckily, like, I like both of the ones that are ours. But my old dentist it was like, I did not like the hygienist, but I like the the sub. Oh yeah. But yeah. I'm like, how do I? Am I going to piss this person off? Then when they see me, like, you chose the other person over me. It's like your hairstylist. Wow, I never even thought you could do that. I mean, there are hygienists that I've liked, mm-hmm. so I was like, well, maybe I'll get her again. Yeah. But I didn't know you could actually request them. Well, because a lot of times the dentist comes in only for like five minutes, whereas like you're all with the dental hygienist a lot longer. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's I, that's why I always, suggest, or always uh, request the same one. How about barista? Somebody said, how high is that on the list? Uh, not on the list at all. You have to have a like. You have a special barista. Like if you go in and they're not yeah. there, what do you do? You don't get your coffee done. I mean, I get a, not a, excited. It's a bad choice because it's not like a bikini barista. But like I get stoked when uh, it's a certain barista. You're like, oh, they make good coffee. But I wouldn't turn around and leave if they weren't there. I, I maybe I'm a little bit more. I find a coffee shop to be the one, but not the actual barista. I get that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, pet kennels and daycares. Which I'm not yeah. sure if that's the same thing or, you know. Oh, no, yeah. You just put your kid in the uh, dog kennel. It's fine, right? You create them. <laughs> Some of those dog kennels are nice. And they, you know what? They get treated well. You know how people really want to make sure their dogs are okay. I think the way they vet those kennels is like, look, well, I think my kid can stay here. Well, I mean, seriously, you guys are great. Well, how about this one? Uh, Tanya says, uh, I've been going to the same optometrist since I was 13. I'm 33 now. So pretty loyal. Love you guys. I have to tell you, um, and, I ha- and I have eyes that need optometry and all that. I, I'm not as loyal. I, I happen to be going to the same one, but I've been kind of wondering if I should. Now that this whole thing's off, well, maybe I should find somebody else. It's interesting, but they're they're loyal. Not doctor, on the list, by the way. I was like like that with doctor, especially when I hit the point where I had to go get the number two. Check. By the way, the number two check. Number, number two, <laughs> exactly, oh, exactly. <laughs> Doctors are number two on the list. And I was like, sized her hands out, and I'm like, that's my doctor for life. And then she left that damn place, and I don't know where she went. So like now, I'm just at the mercy of whoever they bring in. Doctor Sausage Fingers. Yeah. Oh dear. Look, I got news for you. That's that, you definitely want to size somebody up. Uh, yeah, who's your doctor? I just want to see the person's hands. That's right. all I'm looking for. What size ring does she wear? That's all I need to know. <laughs> Are you planning um, on buying or something? No. BJ and Mix mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Should you buy or lease your next car? Most experts would advise that in the long run, buying is more economical than leasing. When you lease a car, you will not build up equity, and you may be responsible for wear and tear or excessive mileage charges. If you do decide to lease, be careful and pay attention to the realities of leasing. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Switch to Farmers and you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance. Exchanges are affiliate. Products not available in every state. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's an 18-year-old woman. Her name is Amari. She's from Virginia. And a few days ago, she was playing hide and seek with some of her younger relatives. Oh, that's fun! You're all stuck at home. You know, you got to stay at home, play a game, and bring you back to your childhood. Yeah, eighteen. So uh, the trouble is, is when you're eighteen years old, you, you usually are, don't play hide and seek, and you are a lot bigger than you used to be when you were a toddler, a player, you know, or a young kid playing that game. 
Uh, I don't think she realized that because after a few rounds, she decided to hide in the washing machine, which, again, if you're smaller, you know, you're a smaller kid, makes sense. <laughs> but if you're an 18-year-old woman, yeah, you might be able to get in, but can you get out? <laughs> Oh, she no. could not get out. Amari got stuck in the washing machine so badly that the fire department wound up having to come to the house oh, man. and remove the top of the machine just to get her out. I'm looking at this, and you can see the smiles on the firefighters, even with their like you know COVID masks that they're wearing. You can see their cheeks are raising because they're like, yeah, this is completely on par with having to get a cat out of a tree. This is so <laughs> awesome. One of the firemen had a great line when she told him about the hide-and-go-seek game. He asked, did you win? Oh, she has to win. Come on. I mean, she gave it up for the team. She gave up the body for this one. She well, had not, to win. You don't win because of the most creative place to hide. Did anyone find her? Oh, uh, yeah. That's how you win. This isn't a, this isn't a Shades of Grey game, BJ. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought to look in the washing machine for her. She won until she started screaming when she was stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Seriously. I'm sorry, but she gets at least an honorable mention. If the fire department get called in because of the game we're playing, you get an honorable mention at least. <laughs> Do you think it was because of her size? Was she like a? I can't tell in the picture if she's like a bigger girl or not. But like, was she bigger? Where like you know, getting in was fine, but getting out, all of a sudden you're like, oh boy, I'm stuck. Yeah, especially or is it just like you just can't move your body. At that, that could be, you know, if you don't have the muscle strength, or you put yourself in a position where leverage wise you couldn't even get yourself out to use your own strength. I mean, she's a young person, so I think that you know. It, it, I'm looking at pictures of her Instagram. She's she's a thin gal. Yeah. So I think it was just the hi. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> you okay with that? Oh, she takes nice pictures. So good for her. Ah. All right, she is 18. Thank yes. God. Thank God she's 18. That's no, you don't understand. If we play that that audio back, you'll be glad that she's 18. <laughs> oh. That's, uh, Rev just did it too. Again, you guys are both glad she's 18. <laughs> well, because you don't expect it. Because you look at the picture of her stuck in the washing machine. She's like, you know, just. Has her hair up, and then all of a sudden, the rest of her picture are like all model shots. Well, if you think about that fact, then the washing machine is, you know, to be able to, to wrap yourself in there like she did around the spindle, because you got to, because this is a top loader. Yeah. Yeah. So the top loader, the fact that she could get in there is amazing to me. I would think that she'd have to be really, a, actually, a really flexible person. Maybe she's a gymnast or something, but then. Once you wrap yourself in there, I don't know how the hell you get out. I remember when we were kids one time, when it was almost like straight out of the after school special of, of a kid hid in a, a refrigerator outside that was left out to be picked up. Oh, no. And you know how those things are. You, can, you can't you can open them from the inside. Yeah. Well, you know, he clearly won. Not, But like by the time we were like, where the hell is he? Finally, somebody thought, let's open up this refrigerator. And there he was. And they're like, oh, boy, that could have went bad. Yeah, that could have went bad. Yeah. Damn, good thing somebody had the brain to go, I wonder if he's in there. Man, that would have been a really awkward night. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a <laughs> very awkward, awkward night. night. Yes. Yeah, awkward is not exactly the word yeah. I use. Uh, he dead, but he won. I mean, I, yeah, we were 30 when we played. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like teenagers. Well, this is Lily's favorite game, hide and seek, right oh. now. And I have to play with her every single time. So, note to self no refrigerators, no washing machine. Oh, no you washing gotta, you gotta get in the washing machine. You do the dryer's that. fine. You okay. Dryer. Okay. Yeah. Because you can get out that way. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You can. Yeah. I don't know. No! It's the lukewarm topic of the day. Well, this 18-year-old girl gets stuck in a washing machine while playing hide-and-seek. Based on this, what stupid situation did you get yourself into? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Delightful Dean. He's not just regular Dean, Steve. He's Delightful Dean. We'll be the judge of that. Hey, Dean. <laughs> What's up, dude? I used to be dirty, Dean, but I took a shower. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. That is delightful. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a feeling oh, yeah. that, Dean, uh, you, you, you enjoy a little bit of the wake and bake? Oh, my Lord. It started with the wake and bake, said me feels all right. You know, when you get a guy that says, I'm delightful, Dean, you know you're going to have yourself a special morning. You an uh, indica or a sativa kind of guy? I'm um, in the couch. Okay. In the couch. Nice. Nice. All right, so delightful, Dean, uh, what stupid situation did you get yourself into? All right, so after the Jackass movies that came out, right? Yep. And and the TV shows, like like all my friends, like one of my one of my buddies got a camera, a video camera for his birthday because his parents liked him too much, and and they were they were well off. So so he got an awesome video camera for his birthday, and uh, and we started filming a whole bunch of Jackass stuff. Like one of my friends would run out in front of cars because he was an idiot. Mm-hmm. One of my buddies, one one of my buddies would like just show up at random places. 
and then me because I have no shame in my game. Um, I I decided to uh, I decided just to go nude and then walk into uh, walk into a store like all naked. You know what I mean? Oh, so you just birthday suited uh-huh. your way into a convenience store? Yeah, exactly. A couple of them. All right. A couple of them. Whoa! So you made it in and out of one already? Oh yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know if yeah, she yeah, was yeah. In and out or not? That's I mean, fair. So, yeah. Did you and, buy anything while you were in there? No, 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 no. I tried to, but but the lady, the lady wouldn't sell me the gum. She she looked at me. and She goes, "Are you flashing me?" And I said, "Yeah, something like that." Uh, well, when you're walking in naked, it's like you're really kind of. I wasn't me. walking in naked. I had a I had a I had a female duster on. You had a, a what? A female duster. What the hell's a female? Yeah, duster? yeah, yeah. Trench coat. Well, it, oh, it, that's you. One, you even yeah. know what that means, Rev? Yeah, I had a duster okay. when I was in uh, yeah. high school. Okay, wait a second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy sounds like a creep. It's not like he walked in naked. He walked in with a trench coat on. That's different than walking in nude. Gun on, gum on his dong. Yeah, that's different. I, he didn't tell me that stuff. Yeah, he's he a, said yeah. I walked into it naked and it, like in jackass, and I was like, okay, that's funny. No, he I, really didn't. He can I call in and say that the stupid situation I got into was taking that call? Yeah, <laughs> I never. So, is have you ever heard of that phrase before? Female duster? No, no. but Rev hey, knew what. Rev, was. how do you know what that means? <laughs> It's a duster is a trench coat. A female one would be a, a female version. One for shaped for a female. Oh, oh. why do they call them dusters? Because uh, they keep the dust away. Oh, see, I thought he he meant female. That is not the reason. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. That uh, cannot be the reason. He's just effing with us. Well, the female duster. I thought he meant it was like it was a, it was a euphemistic way to say you flash people. I That's thought right. he actually had one of those dusters that you use in the house. No, it's He's literally like, a duster is a full-length, light-covered canvas yep. or linen coat worn by horsemen per- to, per- to protect their clothing from trail dust. How about that? A duster. Oh, that makes sense. You know, it's so funny. Oh. They've evolved over the years. But yeah, like, yeah. like what, uh, oh gosh, uh, on, on Preacher, what the, uh, the gunman wore. Uh, yeah, essentially yeah, that's of what killers. it is. Yeah. yeah, he had that long. Yeah, those are dusters. Oh, okay. Today I learned what a trench coat is, a trench coat is called. And he had a female duster for some reason, and I don't know why he was wearing a female coat. I don't, the guy's just, why, why, why am I figuring out delightful, Dean? He's high. Well, I mean, now He's, you've also entered into this competition of the stupid situations you got into. I, I really did, yeah. Trying to make sense of delightful Dean. Good old Dean. Yeah, Dean, by I'm the way. I'm shocked that he was once called Dirty Dean. Yeah. Dean, you're called a flasher. That's different. I don't know why it's different. If you walk in completely nude, it's like... You're completely nude, but if you're walking and flashing a part of your anatomy, it seems worse to me than walking in completely nude, even though both are pretty bad. Oh, I was I was enjoying the ride of the, the, the story until it got to I was tapping my gum on my dong in yeah. front of a female employee. I'm like, all right, well, that's just messed up. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he's an idiot. No, but see, and you know, thanks again, for listening. Dean. This is why this is why the jackass folks were professionals and Dean wasn't. That's what it was. Let's go to Michael in Arizona. Michael, you are on the rock. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. You listening on uh, Radio.com on a smart speaker? What are you doing? Radio.com. Nice. I'm too dumb to have a smart speaker. <laughs> well, you know what? Are you yeah. wearing a duster right now? Yeah, are you wearing a duster? <laughs> I am, I'm wearing clothes, but I'm not wearing a duster. Well, I hear those female dusters are good for certain situations. What you got, man? <laughs> All right. Uh, so I was 13. I had just moved from Virginia Beach to a uh, farming community in Wisconsin where my family was like my uncle, my aunt, whatever. Um, so I was working on the farm and they had harvested a bunch of corn. They had it in their little green tower thing and they're moving it into the silo. And I had a cousin that asked me to get up and start jumping on top of this corn to help get it flowing into the silo. And me just being a dumb city kid, you know, I just follow blind, blindly follow orders Okay. And uh, so I went and started jumping on this corn to try to get it flowing into the ele- elevator to go into the silo. And it just gave way from beneath my feet, and I got sucked into it. Oh! And I was up to my chest in corn, screaming my head off, hoping to be heard above the noise of all the machinery around me. Luckily, my cousin and my uncle heard me, jumped up there, and started ri- like, basically ripping my arms out of my sockets trying to get me out of there. Otherwise... Man. You know, I would have been sucked down. They would have emptied it, you know, and I would have been fine. I wouldn't have got injured or anything. But Well, maybe unless you scooched like down, unless you got suffocated by all that corn. One could have went up something, too. You never know. <laughs> well, that's a, that, yeah. that, that would have been a bonus. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that was 
an exciting evening. The next day at school was great, telling everybody, I almost drowned in corn last night. <laughs> yeah, that would be... Dude, that would freak me out. And then Dirty Dean came over, and he just started tapping his penis with corn, and uh, everybody had a good laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's a penis. I like this text. That's I would I hate name. my cousin. Yeah. Well, you don't know. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Afterwards, I would hate my cousin. Better. I don't think the cousin thought that that was going to happen. Oh, oh you the, think the so? City, the city slicker? The my country stupid f- city cousin? City folks just don't get it, Steve, and country folks like to mess with you because of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. City folks just don't get it. We just don't get it, and I, I think they're a little just jealous, and what they like to do, they like to make fools of us, city folk. How about this guy? I said, I spent an entire day getting a passport and the paperwork done for it. Uh, when my parents were asking me why I had to do that, I told them I needed to take I needed it for a trip to Alaska. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I mean, geography is not yeah, everyone's best. Yeah, uh, you're going. Class. I mean, you're going across countries and stuff. I mean, you could you imagine of, being the parents? Like, wait, you need to travel within the United States. Yeah. Okay. Good luck on that passport. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. You know, like, go get it anyway. Well, it's a good reason to get it. At some yeah. point, you're going to need it, right? Yeah. Or you go to Morania. That's a great place to go to. Where's Morania? <laughs> right next to Stupidia. Oh, okay. Is that close to Slapistan? That's uh, right near Slapistan, as a matter of fact. Kitty nice. Corner. Yeah. Oh, okay. 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Someone said, Stupid situation I got into? I got married. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey. Hey, yo. You knew that was going to happen. Well, that is a lot of stupid situations for people because mm-hmm. they don't really vet the whole, wor- the whole situation. They just don't vet the idea that you're going to be living with this person for the rest of your life. You know, that's the idea. You know, so. Are you sure everything's cool? Like you can live with this person. The sex is good, BJ. That's probably why. A lot of Man, them. you know, I mean, if it, I guess, you know, or if you're getting any sex, I guess that's why. Uh, so he said that my sister was closing her car door. She realized that her keys were still inside, so she went to catch the door, but ended up crushing her finger oh, in the locked door. No, 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 no. With the keys still inside no, the door, no, the car. No, no. The fire department had to cut part of the door off. It took two hours. Oh, my. I can't even imagine gosh. the pain. Oh, don't tell a story like How's that. How's a finger, too? That, that's, 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 yeah, that, I feel that. I, I just, that's, that, that just triggers all the time when you get your finger stuck in the door. Granted, that's painful, but it's like a paper cut. I think everybody can relate to that pain because at some point we've all slammed our finger on some kind of a door. Yeah, we have. It's like stubbing your toe. Oh, but in a car door, they're heavy, and then it's closed. And locked. Ah. Oh. I bet it was the middle finger, too. <laughs> It just oh, yeah. always seems like whenever you see somebody has like a cast or like any kind of stint on it's the their, middle finger or whatever those are, yeah, it's like, oh, you hurt your middle finger. How'd yeah. that happen? Yeah, God will get you for that one is what they would say. It's kind of like a silly, like ironic thing because then they're just flipping you off all the time. Yeah. I bet that's why they break it because, you know, they have friends that they want to flip off. Works out for everybody. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, if you're upside down in your mortgage, should you continue to make the payment? Continuing to pay your mortgage or not is a complex decision because you're going to have to pay to to live somewhere. You're going to have a housing payment. So continuing to make your house payment really depends on several factors. One is whether or not you have a second mortgage. Um, The second one is how affordable your ongoing monthly mortgage payment is. Uh, Another uh, issue is whether your mortgage is adjustable and you're facing an increase in your mortgage payments later on when interest rates go up. If you do have a second mortgage in this economy with the housing prices being down, oftentimes we can re- we can take off or strip off that second mortgage in a Chapter 13 case so that you'd only have the first mortgage to continue to pay. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.